Hello, I'm Norman Swan. Welcome to a very special edition of Tonic. Today, a remarkable story about courage, resilience and achievement by young people. About 13 years ago, I made a film about the experience of teenagers living with a disabling, life-shortening condition called cystic fibrosis. In those days, it was common for children and young people to die of this disorder, which damages the lungs and causes malnutrition because of problems with digestion. But in those 13 years, the story's changed. And these days, people with cystic fibrosis live much longer lives. We decided to find those two adolescents that we filmed all those years ago, George Miliankos and Catherine Dixon, to see what's become of them. Have they achieved their ambitions? We also followed two young people who are the same age today as Catherine and George were then. Back then it was harder. I'd just changed schools. I was 16. Didn't know what I wanted out of life. It was, um, it was more difficult back then. It's got good days, it's got bad days, and it's got really, really bad days. It was most tough when I was 16 when I first got sick because I was quite healthy. Till 16 I never had been to hospital. Pretty much missed six months of the 12 months of school, just being in hospital every couple of weeks for long stints. But generally at the moment, it's Good days. There's been a major improvement and change over the last 10 to 15 years that I've seen and we've all seen in the CF community, particularly in patients as they transfer to the adult care at around 18 or 19 years of age. Certainly 15 years ago, as George and Catherine uh, were involved with a process of transferring to adult care, but many of the patients at that time being transferred had significant lung disease, significant challenges with their quality of life, and were many, in many situations, were being considered for lung transplant soon after they arrived at the Alfred Hospital. These days in our transfer clinics, we're seeing more patients, some have never been in hospital before with their CF care, people who have relationships, people who have uh, occupations already organised, people who are going through to tertiary studies with a clear future and quality of life uh, in, in front of them. When I was young, my parents didn't um, treat me any differently, which was really nice. So I could be the normal kid that did everything and tried to do everything. At one stage, I was doing basketball, netball, kayaking and tennis all at once. Um, and I then proceeded to do swimming squad. I had no idea about the disease. Um, I went in and he said, Harry has cystic fibrosis. And I said, well, what's that? He explained it. It just went right over my head. We felt like we had this perfect child and then all of a sudden everything's taken away from you. Um, but once we came down to the children's for the week and we learnt more about the disease, um, Harry got onto the enzymes He's within two days and his nappies went from 10 to 2 and we thought, hallelujah. <laughs> so I can remember the day quite clearly. We were probably sitting around waiting to hear the result of the sweat test, which um, basically classifies if Natasha had cystic fibrosis or not. One of those experiences that um, I wouldn't like anyone to go through, but a funny experience not knowing what cystic fibrosis was. So CF is the commonest lethal inherited condition that we see in the Western world. It remains incurable and it remains life limiting. But I think one of the things that we actually celebrate these days is the enormous increase in hope, survival and future that people with cystic fibrosis have. I enjoy cooking, it's like a relaxation thing, you know. It takes my mind off stuff, like my worries and stuff like that and perfecting stuff while I'm cooking is a challenge for me. He wanted to study, he wanted to be doctor for the kids, to help the kids. To help the kids because from his... But he can't do it anymore because he's got sick and he's getting tired. Yeah, ambition, um, 
we, with CF, you have a lot of dreams, you do, um, but you've got to be realistic with life. Um, but to tell you the truth, I did want to become a doctor. You know, I wanted to do this, I wanted to do that, I wanted to do a lot of things, but you've got to realise, you know, sometimes that life doesn't, you know, you get curveballs thrown at you, um, speed humps and that, but there was a quite a few things that I wanted to do, but what I'm doing now, I love. I'm happy. I want to do a hospi hospitality course, become a chef or something. Open a cafe one day or something like that. Hey, you going there? Can I get you anything else? Chocolate Yep, yeah, for yourself. No, all right, thank you. Pretty good at the moment, which is great, um, but I do look after myself very well. I don't think medicines make me feel well. I think it's my routine every day that I do have. Um, eating healthy, exercising, working full time. Yeah. It gives me purpose in life to wake up every day. Some days I hate waking up. I don't want to wake up, but when I get to work, I love it. OK, copies up. They know if I'm not feeling well or if I'm grumpy, they know I'm not feeling the best. And you know, I trust them that much that I can leave that afternoon, go home, have a rest. Um, go to the gym, just have a sleep, have an hour of sleep, and then back the next day. I try as hard as I can, then I think I'll be satisfied, but I think I tend to push myself too much because of that, and I get tired a lot because of that, just for the fact that I feel guilty if I don't do heaps of work. I, um, I work from home, so... Um, I might get up sometimes nine, sometimes ten, depending on um, what I have to do during the day and, and do my daily routine, which is um, breakfast, physio, shower, then work. Oh, I... We don't have any met Shane, I got married, we bought a house, and here we are. We've had a couple of pretty horrific things happen in regard to Catherine and SCF, but it hasn't really affected us. If we haven't let CF control our lives, just get to do things as normal people do, we've just got to be a little bit more careful. You know, it, it, it makes our lives better. Like, I'm hoping that it makes Cat's life a lot better. I think one of the major changes that we've seen over the last 15 years is the attention to very early lung disease. Newborn screening was introduced in the 1980s in Australia, so we were meeting patients for the first time in the first few months of life, initiating treatment for any conditions that were occurring, any symptoms that were occurring, and aggressively following them with a regular tune-ups, regular periods in hospital if necessary, and also assessment with a multifaceted team in outpatient facilities as well. And that was concentrating not just in the lung disease that can occur, but also in nutrition. And there's clear evidence of the importance of both of those roles, managing the lung disease, managing nutrition, hand in hand, producing better quality of life for people with cystic fibrosis. With my routine in a day with CF, I wake up uh, quite early. I go to work and ride the horses, which is part of my apprenticeship. I then go to school after having breakfast and getting ready for school. I go to school, live a normal day at life, live a normal life at school with all my mates. I'm quite a social person, so I get along good at school. Um, when I come home, I will do my medication, which involves a flutter, which is a ball that rattles, it's a tool that is used to rattle the uh, mucus and gunk off your lungs. I also do other sorts of medication like uh, tablets and pills and inhalers and all that sort of stuff. Then after that, uh, later in the night, I'll go to things like footy training, and that's twice a week, and I also play footy on the weekends. So quite a busy day, but yeah, keeps me up to scratch. When I come to hospital, I suppose you could say, it's good and it's bad. Um, you're away from your family, well, I've got mum, but um, I'm over the two weeks that uh, over the week that I'm here, I've never really seen my um, brother or mates. But um, hospitals, something that I've learnt to cope with. Um, I know I have to do it, and 
in the long run, you do feel better coming out of it. My father's a horse trainer, and sadly, I've got the horse, horse disease in my blood as well as CF. The full gallop in the wind of like 60 kilometres per hour, you're like, well, this is awesome. And once you lose that control, my motto is sit down and look good. <laughs> so <laughs> if you can't hold them, look good. So yeah, that's what I try and do. We made a deal when Harry approached us to say that he wanted to do an apprenticeship of a jockey. It's always been his dream, so I don't know why we were surprised, but um, the deal was that his health had to come first, his school had to come second, and then the apprenticeship third. And if either the first two slip, well, the jockey apprenticeship had to go. I went to physio because I wanted to do something in the health profession to start with and I wasn't 100% sure what I wanted to do but I guess being around the physios all the time and seeing like the work that they do I guess kind of motivated me that oh yeah I could help someone walk like there's all these different types of physio and I could help a sports star after they, they're injured like depending on uh, what like category I go into I can help different people for different reasons. When I go to tell my friends about it I basically I let them ask the questions so I'll say what I have I'll say that you know it affects my lungs and so it affects what I can do but I won't go into full detail so I'll sort of let them ask any questions and then follow up so they might ask you know what is physio and what do you do and I might show them one day or just explain it to them but yeah I guess I wait for the questions rather than go into the full explanation. The mates at school, like real close mates, they, they all know and they, they don't really care. Um, they're all just like, oh, Harry's in a hospital, he can't come to whatever we're doing. And with people that you meet new, they actually don't know and it's, it is quite hard to tell them. So I try to bring it on to them slightly to show first that I am normal. I've told the people at the apprentice school really close what I've got. And then say other kids, like they ask, oh, do you smoke, you're always coughing, or do you have asthma? And I say, I've got a really bad case of asthma. And then I'll, go, I'll approach them later on and explain it to them. Um, I've always found a good way of telling people what's wrong. And I've always, everyone, you know, everyone says, oh, that's okay, you know. Um, they're like me, they're able to live with it and um, adjust. Relationships are tough. Um, I think, I don't know, on a personal level, for me it is. Um, I do date a lot of girls, but when it comes to that time where you have to tell them you've got cystic fibrosis, because you can hide it for as long as you can hide it, you know, you, um, you're taking your Creon, you can sort of just say, oh, it's just vitamins. You know, I just need to take them every so often. It just keeps me healthy and looking good. Um, but there comes a time where you have to tell them and I tend to push people away then. Um, I've tried to put that barrier down. Um, but that's probably the hardest thing is telling someone that you're cystic fibrosis that you love, you know, take that next step and get married, maybe have kids, but that, that scares me. Because um, where do I leave that person where, okay, I, do, I, I am healthy now and happy, but in two, three years down the track where we're married and maybe have a child or we even have twins. So I've got twins in the family that run in my family. Um, and I get sick, where does it leave her? Because of the cross-infection um, rules and regulations at the Alfred, they, uh, they tend us to stay away from other people with CF, um, just in case we've got anything that um, I guess we can pass on to the other person. An underlying inherent problem that occurs in people with cystic fibrosis is chronic bacterial infection that occurs in their airways. Now many of these organisms will not cause problems to other people but there are particular organisms unique in cystic fibrosis which not only will cause accelerated lung damage in people with cystic fibrosis but have the chance of actually cross infecting other people with cystic fibrosis. And for that reason, we have to set up processes whereby particular cohorts are, are identified in cystic fibrosis clinics 
so that patients will actually go to outpatients and be admitted to hospital and go to physiotherapy techniques based on what particular organisms they have uh, in their sputum. It's been 14 years ago since we did the last evidence. No way! George and I uh, met in the last video and we've remained really good friends since then. He's, um, he's a good mate. Um, she's, she's amazing what she's done with her life and how she keeps going. Um, we don't see each other as much as we like, but we're still very, very good friends. We talk a lot on the phone, text message a lot. It's, it's good to have someone who knows what you actually are going through um, that actually can say, I know what you're going through and actually mean it. She is an amazing wife to Shane and she will be an amazing mother one day. It was amazing to see my best friend get married, yeah, who has cystic fibrosis. Um, who would have thought, you know, 13 years ago that I'll be managing a cafe and Catherine will be married and, you know, having kids one day and, you know, actually living life. We are, like, we, we've, we've got a terminal disease, but we are actually living life. We're doing everything that everybody else does. We have dreams, we're doing those dreams, we, we're making them come true. I'm in for nearly two weeks every time. Mm. So are you in for I'm what, a in week for, or? Uh, a week and then a week at home, so. Okay, so you do hospital in the home every time you come? Yep. Okay. A tune-up's a period of therapy where patients receive intravenous antibiotics, usually targeted at an organism called Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Pseudomonas is an organism that doesn't respond well to oral antibiotics, and so patients will receive these intravenous therapies as a way of suppressing the amount of organisms that are present and producing symptoms in their sputum. The Baxter pump, because it didn't fit in my pocket, because it was the middle of summer and I had shorts, so I had to wear that, like, the bum mm, bag. Yeah. And it was so funny because people used to see the cord and wonder what the hell the cord was. Because I used to be sitting there in class and because it was in my left arm, yeah. I write with my left hand. Yeah. And there's this big cord going to my back, like around the back of me. And they're like, what the hell is that? A, a, kid, um, a kid in one class thought that I had a bomb. He was, <laughs> he was touching me and I go, don't touch it, it'll go off, it'll go off. You can't, you'll, you'll blow everything up, don't touch it. And he got scared and he, yeah. <laughs> Which is good because it's a bit awkward when people touch you and you've got something in your arm. My sister's 15 and my brother's 11, so... And you're the oldest? Yeah, I'm the oldest. Yeah, I'm, I'm the oldest to my bro one brother as well. Yep. But he doesn't have CF, yours don't either, do they? No. And, in fact, one's a carrier and one's not going to be a carrier at all. So we're, like, three totally different. Mm. Yeah, what about... Do you know about your brother? Do you know if... No. Does your brother ever get, like... Feel like he's left out when your mum's down here looking oh, after you, or a little bit. I, I think he, like when he was younger, he used to miss mum a lot, like when she was down here with me. But I, I think he's like everyone always starts to get used to it. Yep. With age and that, what about your siblings? Yeah, well, to start with, they missed mum, and then now that mum's not there, sort of dad has to come between us. Yeah. But because I'm older, I can stay here by myself and. It's not such a hassle, and I know the nurses pretty well. Yeah. So they sort of become like your brothers and sisters. Yeah. Like, just That's to a like come that, and teach you, and yeah, come and teach you and look after you. But um, yeah. So dad comes down probably a couple of times a week, and then goes home and looks after them. So I guess they feel like it's sort of half and half, so they don't feel too left out now. Um, the peg is good health-wise, and I really sort of don't like it in other ways. Nutrition is almost as important as managing lung disease in people with cystic fibrosis. But people, as they get sicker, sometimes aren't able to maintain their required energy intake. And in order to supplement that, we sometimes have to insert surgically a tube called a gastrostomy tube or a PEG tube. And that's a tube that sits on the front of the stomach wall in and goes into the stomach. And through that route, we can provide supplemental feeding during the night to increase the energy intake of each patient. I've had it for since the end of primary school, so since the end of year six when I was weighed, I literally weighed 28 kilos, I think it was. Yep. Um, and I was just like skinny and I wasn't growing at all. And I put it in and I put on 10 kilos straight away. Yep. But it's something that you feel embarrassed about, like um, when yep. you're at the pool with your friends and you're you know what I mean by that? Like, you've got this weird thing in your gut. Yeah. And uh, playing footy and that, it's a bit 
different. Like you've got this thing in your gut and they tackle you and because I wear a protector around it, they go, what the hell is that, that hard thing? Yeah. And you go, oh, I've got a pretty big six pack, mate, and run away. <laughs> Cystic fibrosis treatment has changed a lot. Um, people are actually living with cystic fibrosis. When I was 16, I was going in hospital quite a lot. The systems that they have in place in clinic are better. Um, so you, you, you don't only see your doctor and do a breathing test now. You see dietitian, you see physio, you see social worker, you see occupational th um, therapist. So there's, 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 a, there's a vast number of people you see which help you in, you know, in the long run. Catherine had almost no reaction as a small child because she didn't have much illness as a small child and really at about 14 when all those other issues were going on she suddenly realised she did have a problem. We spent a lot of time talking. I was one of the more fortunate adolescents or children with CF. There were a lot of children that I know of that have CF that you know are a lot sicker than me and, and needed the attention that I didn't need. So uni was good. I, um, I ended up doing it part time. So I split the three year course over the four years um, for myself and for my sister. My sister was really sick at the time. So it gave me time with her that I wouldn't had ordinarily had. Um, so that was good. I think we're on the verge of a very exciting time in cystic fibrosis. There's been research conducted over many decades in cystic fibrosis, really targeting at the physiological problems that occur in CF and ways of actually trying to minimise that. Research going forward over the next decade or so, I believe, will target exactly preventing the physiological problems actually occurring, so-called mutation-specific therapies. So we're not actually waiting for the disease to have its physiological consequences. We're trying and initiating therapy which will prevent those physiological consequences actually occurring in the first place. Future, um, I, I, I tend to not to look too far ahead. Um, I like to go every day as it comes. I, have, um, I do have a few dreams. Um, I'm looking to buy a house. I never thought 13 years ago I'd ever be able to afford to buy a house because I was on government pension. I was. Um, working part-time, I didn't think I would have enough funds to ever have a deposit to buy a house, but I do now. Health is, is nowhere near as good as it was last time we did the, the filming. Um, when we did the last video, I had a lung function of 90%. So over the last sort of 11 years, it's dropped down to about 30%. I think transplant is something that I'm going to have to think about. While I've got the all clear at the moment, we uh, We'll just base it six months by six months at a time, I think. We, we are attempting to have a child through surrogacy, so because I can't have children myself, my lung function's too low, we're, um, we're attempting to do it that way. So Shane's sister has, has kindly stepped in and, and we're trying to do that at the moment. While cystic fibrosis remains a life-limiting condition, there are some estimations that if not a single further step in research advancement occurred in t since 2011, patients born in 2011 with cystic fibrosis would live well into their 50s, which is an enormous advance even from the time that George and Catherine were born and from the time very early on in the 1930s and 40s when cystic fibrosis was first recognised when 90% of children would die before they were four years of age. It's tough and you need a lot of help, but it's, it doesn't, doesn't stop you from doing anything. My mum, she's the matriarch of the family, um, an amazing, amazing woman. Look, I know you're just my mum, but you're my friend too. Yeah. yeah. You're still my friend too. Yeah. When you feel good, I feel good. When you're sick, I feel sick too. She makes me happy when I'm really, really sad. Um, you know, I look back at it now, I, 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 we, we used to clash quite a bit when I started firstly going to hospital, because I always used to think she was on the doctor's side, not on my side. But looking at it when I'm 30 years old now, first time I went to hospital when I was 16, scared out of my wits, never been in this situation before ever in my life. 
She was there day and night, never went home for two weeks. Um, on my side, always. She's always there. She keeps me alive. She's an amazing woman. Are you <coughs> special? Not special. Yeah, to me. Yeah. Very special. Yeah.